Welcome to Women in WP, a bi-monthly podcast about women who blog, design, develop, and more in the WordPress community. Okay, welcome to the show. I'm Angela Bowman. And I'm Amy Masson. And I'm Tracy Epps. Our guest today is Swahili Liam, who is the current content marketer for Blog Vault, which is a popular backup tool. They also make Migrate Guru and Malcare. Swahili is joining us from Bangalore, India. Welcome to the show. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> as you know, as a regular listener, we start off each episode by asking our guests to tell us about their journey to WordPress. How did you get started? Well, if I have to be very honest, I wouldn't even call myself someone who's completely into WordPress because I don't happen to use it uh, in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I started working with Blog Vault, I think about a year and a year and a half ago. And that was my first introduction to the WordPress industry and the ecosystem itself. And I've, I've dabbled in a lot of things while working with, with them. Um, uh, I, I tried out outreach for a while. I did um, cold email outreach for a while. I, then I moved to writing content. Then I moved to, um, more, now I'm more of in a, in, in a PR role. Uh, so I take care of marketing our content, our newsletters. Um, I'm still handling the outreach initiative and trying to be more of a community person. So to all of this, just, despite the fact that it, I'm working in the WordPress ecosystem, I myself don't actually use WordPress in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, I have created a, a website. That was the first task that was given to me when I joined Blog Vault, uh, which was to create a WordPress site and just explore the whole dashboard, try out new plugins. But um, I think after that, there have been very few times that I actually used WordPress. But that's how I got into it. And I still believe that um, I'm still a part of the WordPress ecosystem because I'm still contributing to a, to, a, to, a, to a business, to a company that helps WordPress owners. So yeah, that, that's me. As, as you've gotten into this just in the past year, what have, what have you gleaned is the WordPress ecosystem and, and just like, what have you learned about WordPress? It's so fascinating to hear from an outsider, like, what is this thing we call WordPress? And have you been to WordCamps and like, what's been your engagement in that whole environment? I, okay, so I think when I initially started, it was a complete outsider's perspective. And the challenge for me was I was not just entering a completely new industry or an ecosystem, but I was also completely entering a new phase of my life where I was moving from being someone who was in college to someone who is now working full time. So um, my main focus was just, you know, trying to get used to that. And um, I think in the initial months, it was very, um, it was a very professional thinking that I had towards the idea of WordPress. It was just, you know, this is my job, this is what I gotta do. I'm not gonna try and get into it as much. But then with time, I realized that the, I discovered Facebook groups, I discovered podcasts, I discovered that this, even if you don't use WordPress, you can actually still be part of it. And uh, for me, the ecosystem is primarily um, the repository, the wordpress.org and um, I'm part of a few uh, teams there, the marketing team and the docs team. I haven't, I've done a few tasks here and there, but I haven't really been able to put my time into it. Um, and um, I think the ecosystem also has all these beautiful WordCamps that keep happening. I was supposed to attend WordCamp Asia, but uh, that didn't happen because of the entire COVID situation. But um, a few of my colleagues did attend, I think, WordCamp Europe and WordCamp um, Europe and um, US uh, last year. We actually sponsored them as well as small time sponsors. And that was a lot of fun, despite the fact that I didn't get to go because um, I still got to do a lot of the uh, behind the scenes stuff, you know, like making our merchandise, getting those printed, you know, brainstorming on what kind of swag we like to take because we wanted to do something that's different. And we wanted to do something that represents, you know, us and India. So we actually, I think we took um, these really cool fridge magnets from um, a place called Rajasthan in Northern India. It's a complete desert and they have a very rich, beautiful culture. So we got a bunch of stuff printed from there with, with those really, with designs from their culture. And um, we, we took some of those. We, uh, we also had some fortune cookies 
and a lot of t-shirts. So despite me not going there, all of that was, I really like got all of that done. So that was still fun for me. And um, yeah, it was a challenge to figure out how to, um, uh, you know, ship everything and take it there. So I think I was also in touch with the organizers trying to figure that out. And then we just figured we'll just take it in our luggage in the end. And yeah, that's, that's been my, um, that was my initial introduction to the entire WordPress ecosystem. I think a few months into it, um, I was really told that, you know, if you want to actually be good at this, uh, once I transition into the, a more of a PR role, they told me that I really should use WordPress and I should really just be out there and try to be more um, part of the community. That's when I joined more groups. I, I started, um, you know, applying to a few word camps. I knew that once, especially once things got virtual, I figured nothing like it. I can apply to all of them now. So I did apply to be a, a speaker and I was so surprised that I was actually asked to be a speaker uh, at WordCamp Kent, which was I think a month ago. And that's actually the first time that I really got to, yeah, I just applied thinking, hey, let's, you know, let's just try it out. And then suddenly I had to actually give an entire talk, which was so, it was exhilarating. I think I stayed up till about 4 a.m. trying to record it because it was too noisy during the day. And um, yeah, I think that's when I really realized that this is fun and this is what it is to be part of the community. And I, got to, I get to talk to a lot of people, even, even though I might not um, personally know a lot of people, whether it's through podcasts. I've been listening to you guys even before I think we reached out and decided to do the sponsorship with you. And um, I think that, was, yeah, yours was one of the first ones I heard. No, actually, I, I heard to um, WP and Up before that uh which is now big orange heart so i think that's where it started from and um yeah it's been a lot of fun for me so far there's so many aspects to wordpress besides just building the what building a website or coding you know you have uh forums that you can be part of um i've also tried to answer a few tickets on the repo that we get for our plugin and just try to be of help wherever possible so I think it, it really makes me feel like I'm, um, I'm doing something and I can, um, I'm, I'm trying to add value wherever I can. So yeah, I, it's more of a, it's more of a community and um, uplifting feeling for me than using what that's, yeah. What was your talk on in Kent? So um, yeah, it's actually something I've, I never really spoke about before openly. It was about uh, my journey with ADHD and how, um, how I transition, how the transition from being someone who was in college to being someone who was a full-time marketer. And it was, it, was, it was quite challenging, at least in the very beginning, because I think, you know, until last year, I mean, I was studying, I was in college, I was in school. You, I still had a certain sense of control over, I would say, my friends, the kind of crowd that I'm in, the kind of people that I'm meeting, because you know, you don't just go up to strangers and talk to them as much in college. You find your own gang and you find your own people and you talk to them. But um, being pushed into a job, I mean, you have no control over the kind of people you're going to meet, your colleagues or who you're going to end up talking to. So that was very interesting for me. And um, the entire aspect of having to focus and get work done for about eight hours a day was... Oh my God, that was a complete wave that hit me really badly in the beginning. But I eventually learned to um, learn to sort of um, make do with it. So that's what my talk was about. It was about how I started and the challenges that I had initially and how I managed to overcome it. And a very big part of my talk was also um, in lines with how the community helped me and um, just you know being part of something, how, how that can really make you feel motivated and make you feel like wanting to do more. Uh, yeah, when you first started, were you actually in the office? Because uh, for me, the big uh, shift was uh, when I first start, joined the workforce, we were still kind of in cubicles, which is mm -hmm. much easier for someone with ADD or ADHD. Yes, um, and then everyone shifted to these open office environments, which was so mm -hmm. great for, supposed to be so great for collaboration. Terrible for anyone <laughs> with ADD, ADHD. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, so like, did you actually have to go into a physical office? Do you have to navigate yes. that space as well? Yes. That, I think now when I look back, I realized that was an absolute boon for me because 
right now we're working from home for the last I think three or four months and it's been so tiring and challenging to try and just focus while I'm at home because you don't feel like focusing at home and uh, yeah I definitely miss being in an office and thankfully I think um, I don't know if it was because nobody really had the guts to come and talk to me about it but people let me just be weird at work so whenever I didn't I was not being able to focus I just go into a conference room, go in and sit, by, sit alone by myself, sit on the floor, go into the kitchen. You know, I do whatever I wanted to work. I'd just go sit on the terrace. You know, so, and people just left me alone and let me do it. So I think that was, a very, that was something that really helped me even at work. And, we, and there was a set system in place which kicked in, I think, I think about a month after working in. Working, um, you, we have this system where you, know, you, you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you take the train, um, you start working at 10 and then you take a break at 12, you have lunch at 1, you take a walk, you work some more, then you take another tea break and then you work some more and then I go home. So there was this entire routine that was in place which completely got shot once we started um, working from home. So I definitely do miss the work environment and I believe that that was something that really helped me um, overcome the ADHD side of things. Oh yeah, like for for me, I remember the the struggle because I need that schedule. I mean, that really helps to have that routine. Yeah. And um, I like I'm lucky. I was able to. Um, I still rent a, an office space for my own company, um, even when working in an office, so that you know if I really needed to focus, I could go there because I found I couldn't work from home because I had yeah. all of these other distractions. But um, so but what and then and then the then the pandemic hit and then we're all stuck yeah. at home and at first I was like okay well this is this is great now I can focus on all these things that are on these other distractions uh well now everything else but now the routine is gone yeah so now that that kind of you know rattled everything but yeah do so you actually end up working more hours than you used to before um well Usually, yes. Um, so when I actually first started my company, I worked, I had, uh, I have a two bedroom house and I had um, just converted my second bedroom into like an office, um, into my office and I worked from there. And some people say that they have like, they can't work from home because there are all these distractions. Mm -hmm. I had the opposite problem where I couldn't not work from home. As soon as I was up, I was like, okay. And then I was trying to be very strict. I go into my physical office space to work and then it started to be on the couch and then it was in the bedroom and then I was like everywhere in the house was my office and then I couldn't relax laundry piled up because I had to work you know yeah. or I was like if I was home I was like well I have no excuse I could be working right now and I, I found the opposite problem so when mm -hmm. I started uh, you know renting shared spaces with people in like smaller settings where I had more control over that's how I found uh, my methods of doing that. So, uh, but that took years, like <laughs> years. Yeah, well, out of college, I no, it was no way. So that that's uh, um, it's an amazing extra feat that you have to overcome coming right out of college. I I see that too, where you have to you know, you're working, I, I don't move around. Like I work at my desk because I have a giant monitor system that isn't very convenient to move. But um, I do like, I'll be cooking dinner. I'm like, oh, I can just go respond to this email or, you know, we're watching TV. Oh, I got to go fix this website for somebody. And if you only work at your office, then I don't think you do that as much. That's true. Yeah, I've thought of that. Yeah. Amy, you could just put it on wheels and just roll it around right <laughs> if i could roll it outside because you know the weather's been really nice this week that would be ideal but like i see people with their laptops and that's just not enough screen space for me i just can't don't you have I a just pool do too it. like you could put it by the pool wow. yeah right? i could just put it wrap it in some saran wrap and float <laughs> is that I I that, that works. Works. what could possibly go wrong <laughs> nothing could go wrong <laughs> I, I actually did build a website on the back of a cruise ship on the on the deck wow. watching the water and we were heading through the Caribbean and it was just like you know like the work is never ending like so I have a vacation but you know it's like I just had to get this one web website done and I just sat I tried to stay back away so I wouldn't get water on me <laughs> but just like hanging out just like well this isn't a bad life I'll do this for like two or three hours and then I'll go 
you know. I literally have a picture of myself sitting on the beach with my laptop and I was, there was no Wi-Fi, So I was connected to my phone trying to fix something for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. I was, I was at a web summit in Portugal and Lisbon and someone had this major issue on their site and I was in this museum. So I just sat down on a bench with my phone <laughs> and got on their <laughs> website. Like yeah, I downloaded museum. some like code editor for my like phone one time and I was like, this is really hard, but I fixed the website. That's exactly what I did. Uh, <laughs> Too much work, but I do right? love your schedule. I mean, I want this schedule documented. Okay, so let me get this again. You take the train, by the way, which I love taking the train yes. and you don't have that in the US and oh, yeah. That's what I love about Europe. Yeah, but some places, just not where that's true. Not where we live. live. Yeah. Um, Midwest, West, no trains. East Coast, some. So you take the train. You start work at ten a.m. And you yeah. take a, you take a little walk or you take a little break at noon. So yeah, I take a break around at noon. Yeah, and I just probably go to the terrace or just go to the kitchen and get some. Yeah, yeah. and then then you then you take a lunch at one which I, I imagine your lunch is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, we actually, we actually had, uh, lunch was given um, by the company. So we had like a proper caterer who gave us good food, which I miss now. Oh, and, that's uh, nice. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Me too. So do you yeah. need any other help? Because, or I'll just come <laughs> and hang sure. out. It'll, we'll okay. just come and, and hang out. Oh, yeah. one great advantage was that we, uh, so our office is in one of the most happening places in Bangalore. So we have, so many restaurants there that even if you don't feel like having lunch at work, you could just pop to another place, just walk there and just, you know, eat whatever you wanted. And I think that was the best part about being there, which I miss so much now that I'm at home. I can't just, we had this really good gelato and ice cream place two doors away, which I don't have right now. And I was used to eating there at least once or twice a week. And uh, there's, there's no ice cream within three kilometers of my house as I've actually gone and searched and no one has ice cream. So yeah. I would weigh like a million pounds because I would just <laughs> eat my way through that city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well you do get to walk you a lot. Should come. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and then then tea time. What time is tea? So tea time was used to be at around five. That was a break that I think the entire office used to take. We there was this little store outside um, opposite our work. And we just go get some coffee or a sandwich and just take a walk if we wanted. Or go get some ice cream. So, yeah, I think that, that was course. something we really look forward to at, at between 5 to 6, just for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I'd finish work by, uh, I think initially I was working till almost 39. And then I slowly started you know, trying to make myself finish things a little earlier. And uh, I think since last August, I joined... Um, I joined a gym. It's not really a gym, but it's more classes. And uh, they, they had one of their gyms, which was very close back to the office. So I'd finish everything by 7.30. And then I had to just take a, it was just two bus stops away. So I'd just take a bus and go to that gym. And I had a class at eight. So I think since August onwards, I was working until about 7.30. But before that, I was working almost to 39-ish. So. so you kind of had, so if you work from 10 to eight, that's, that's really, wow. That's a 10 hour. Yeah. But you have yeah. all these breaks, which yes, is kind of like do. how I work. I pretty much start work at, yeah. officially start work at 10. I work till seven thirty or eight, but then I have good breaks. Like I have a really good lunch or I might have an exercise. Well, my exercise class is before I start working, but, mm. um, but I'll, t but I'll take nice little breaks but it used to not be that way because kind of the more american way would be like you work from 7 30 to 5 30 and you're heads down, down just like half, yep. head down half an hour but like i realized like in my kind of work and doing all this coding and stuff i can focus for a solid hour and mm -hmm. then i kind of my brain gets tired and i have to get on yeah. and walk around and then i can come back and focus for another hour especially right. at home like at work for some reason i can focus longer but i find hour increments but i love the two hour take a break another hour take some lunch yeah it sounds so much very, healthier yeah that was very encouraged at work now that i can think about it i'd always find at least one person taking a short nap at any time during the day at least one person in office naps are nap. so great yeah and we also had this huge uh, 
screen and this huge TV. Yeah, a TV. And uh, you could play FIFA, you could watch Netflix, whatever you wanted to watch. And yeah, that really helped. Being able to take that break really, it, it's just like you got off and you just recharged and you came back. And it, it really helped with focus, which is something that's lacking now. I feel like the entire day feels like a break to me. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a challenge trying to focus through all of that. I think that's a good point though too yeah you you said a term weird at work and i'm just wondering is that like unusual is that a like is not everybody weird at work everyone is weird but i think compared to the others i was a little more weird than usual no one else you know sat on the floor trying to work or went to the tennis to work that was just me and uh, I, I think that's why, I think everyone just let me be, despite all of that, they let me do whatever I wanted. And uh, for me, it was primarily because of the fact that I couldn't focus for long. When, when, when Angela said that she can work for an hour straight, that, that's very hard for me. So yeah, I would, I would need to make myself keep doing something different, doing something new, even just moving around or trying to work in a different space, that would really help me. So I think I don't, I don't remember most most people trying to do that. They just they would be able to get into that zone and work uh, for quite for a much longer time. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and um, I I find that that those breaks because I, I I've done it. I'm like, okay, well, I have this deadline. I just need to like barrel through it, you know, right? Um, I never get things done, but I take a break. And then I come back to it and I was like, oh, okay, now I can focus on things. So I think that's really smart. And I think, well, now everyone's working from home. So now yeah. we kind of have more control over that. But I think businesses were starting to kind of get that, you know, uh, that idea of, oh, well, we, we need to have more of that flexibility in on the coast. I should say that. Um, the Midwest is still about 10 years behind, you know, so they're still like, <laughs> whatever, but I mean, I think that's really smart and it's really good um, to know yourself and how you work yeah. um, because otherwise you're just going to like get yourself frustrated. Yeah. And uh, I think when you were in, sorry, sorry yeah. when you were in college, what were you, um, uh, what were you studying there? Well, I did a very, um, I'm going to say generic because it is a generic course. I did something called a BCom, which is a bachelor's of commerce and that covered a lot of topics under just business. So we had marketing, we had um, we had a lot of accounts that I had to learn, a lot of accounting, and uh, a lot of financial management and um, organizational behavior. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that that's actually part of it. And the reason I'm saying generic and not being very enthusiastic about it is because I think at least the college that I went to and in general the in Indian educational system is quite bookish. So, um, yeah, when I actually started working, I realized that there was hardly anything that I've learned during college that might have helped me at my work. I mean, no one teaches you, you know, what is SEO or what is, um, you know, what is digital marketing all about? It's something I learned completely on the job. So, yeah, I did. That's what I studied. Uh, but I think the thing that one thing that really helped me uh, from college was interacting with people. We, I, I went to a college which had this so much diversity uh, in terms of the kind of people that you meet. You know, you have people from all parts of India and all parts of the world, actually. So that's that's one thing that I would really take back that I got to learn to interact with people. So yeah. And how did you get connected with Blog Vault? How did you know? Not being yeah. in the WordPress community, how did that happen? Very honestly, it was. Uh, uh, someone that I knew knew someone who was at Blog World, and we happened to meet somewhere. And they told me that you know, we're looking for um, we have applications. Or you can apply. We have a job opening, and I tried, and I managed to get through. I remember my first interview. Um, I, I just had one interview actually, and uh, one phase of that was to they gave me an entire task, which was to. Uh, now. All right, so if the situation was that there's a WordPress site and it's been hacked and you're not, you don't have uh, access to the back end, so how are you going to try and access it? You don't have access to the dashboard, sorry. And that was the first time I even realized that WordPress has a dashboard. <laughs> and I remember trying to 
they gave me about half an hour to figure it out and I was absolutely stumped. And um, then I started Googling and I found this something called FTP and I tried that and I tried cPanel and I, I broke that site actually uh, when, I was trying to, when I was trying to figure the, the thing in, the thing out. But um, they hired me because I was able to just at least get a start on what I'm supposed to do. So I think that's, that's how I actually got, uh, got, got in touch with Blogger and managed to you know, get the job here. I love that you broke the site. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're a real person either. in WordPress if you haven't broken a site. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just glad they didn't ask me to fix that later. So, <laughs> because I would not have been able to do that. But yeah, that's, uh, it was just through a friend of mine who mentioned that uh, they're hiring. And I think for a very long time, I thought the company was called Blog World. And I will have to probably do some sort of blogging for them. And then I realized nothing to do with that. Um, yeah, that, that's how I got into this. And so you've had to learn WordPress just kind of on the job. What are you, yeah. what are you doing to learn it and educate yourself? Um, I think, uh, like I mentioned, the first week that we started working, uh, that I started working, I was told that my and only task during that week is to just understand WordPress. Uh, there were a couple of courses they told me to do a lot of links they had this entire onboarding document that they did and uh, i got to create my own site i got to try all these different plugins and try to add as much functionality as i could and i think at the end of it i created a site where um it was about i think it was i had music um, lo-fi music for concentration and i had um, a blog which was about mental health and i had a woocommerce store where I could sell tea. That's that's what my entire website there was. So um, I maintained that for a while, uh, though I wasn't actually selling there. I did maintain that for a while, but then I think after a point that kind of dropped off. And um, uh, besides that, I, I did get a chance to work on our own um, uh, company websites, blog work, um, uh, do a few, um, some of the drafting and publishing of content that we wrote, that I wrote. And besides that, just uh, I think for the last two months, I've actively been trying to get back at it. So uh, I created another website. And this time I tried the, uh, so the first time I was doing it last, last year, they gave me the whole hosting. They gave me everything I needed. This time I tried to just set all of that up by myself. And um, then I created a website. And now I'm still trying to power through and find more things to work on. I've, I've actually been trying to take a couple of, courses as well. Um, there's WP101 that I was using to try and um, they, have a, they have a huge course on things that you can do with WordPress. So yeah, I've been trying to use that to build it more. Okay, not WordPress related. Do you find T helps with your focus? <laughs> yes, but I think I'm partial towards coffee, which is ironic because I think up till I started working, I did not like coffee. And it's only after I started working that I realized I need coffee, even if I don't like it. So since then, I've been more of a coffee person. But yeah, I do, I do like tea. That's I, I do like um, green tea and I like trying different kinds of things out. And uh, I don't know how you guys make it there, but we call it chai here in India. And it's it's like a staple thing that we have and that everyone has every day in the evening. And we make it with milk and tea leaves and we put stuff like ginger and cinnamon and we call it elaichi. I'm not sure what you call that. Okay, I'll find the word for it. Yeah. So yeah, I do like tea. I'm a coffee girl, but I didn't. I didn't start drinking coffee until I had children, because then I would have my baby <laughs> and I would be up all night, and so I'd get up in the morning, and in order to function, I needed to have coffee, and now coffee. I'm just yeah. addicted, and that's you know. But it does help me work. I feel like like when I have my coffee cup and I'm just sitting here drinking and then it's empty, it just, I, I don't work as well. I have like all sorts of tea. And then there's one company that has loose leaf tea that is fandom. They call fandom things. So I have all of these tea things that have Dr. That's Who That's a Dr. Who box. Yeah. Exactly. They all have different, different uh, designs on them. And I, I am not, I never got into coffee and I actually didn't like tea for until my thirties, I think. And then once I started doing that and I, I feel like it, it helps me work. 
Um, but again, it's one of those, I was like kind of experimenting with things and it depends on a lot of different aspects of it. But yeah, I wish we had more of a tea culture here in the US, but well, whatever. I'm totally a tea drinker. I, I love Darjeeling. It's my favorite tea. And I know the Kashmir region, all the, where they make Darjeeling is going to be yeah. impacted by climate change and, and political things as well. And, yeah. um, and yeah, I like English breakfast tea, Scottish breakfast tea, like all the, all the mm -hmm. black teas and yeah. I drink tea all day long and I love, love, love coffee, but I'm an angry coffee drinker. I get like this edge like I want it. I'm like, I know this can make me think better, but then I'm just like a little just sh sharp around the edges when I drink it. So yeah. for the well-being of my clients and my friends and my family, I drink um, in the afternoon, I have a decaffeinated cappuccino and that's about the safety level of I don't think I've ever tried decaffeinated. Yeah, but tea, I can drink tea all day long and it doesn't make me angry. It has a different chemical property. I'm big into tea and we have a tea house here where you can take classes and learn about all the teas and where they come from. And you wouldn't like Angela small. when she's angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't know. I've never seen her angry. So. <laughs> I've never seen me angry. I know, right? <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm so sweet. Then they're like, whoa. <laughs> don't give her any coffee. <laughs> I think we need to spike her tea with coffee and just see what happens. Well, and then I talk too oh, yeah. much. If I have, co if I have caffeine, I will just, yeah, you cannot stop talking. <laughs> That's a good experiment. <laughs> we could do like an episode where we give Angela um, coffee and see what happens. And then I also think that'd be fun to do like a women in WordPress drunk episode. Ooh, yes. Coffee. And <laughs> yes. That would, I mean, yep. That's what that the I feel like it would be pretty much the same, but just. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about, so what, we, you know, we're in this special time. We call it the special time. Um, you know, global pandemic is a special <clears throat> time in history. We are living through this. We will tell <clears throat> our grandchildren and great grandchildren if we have them about living through the 2020 global pandemic. What is it like in Bangalore? And I know Mumbai has some unique challenges. You know, different parts yeah. of India have unique challenges. And, and Bangalore is much more of a tech hub. And, and there, it's, there's a whole different vibe happening yeah. in Bangalore. But, but what, are you, what are you seeing? And are there different levels of experiences people are having there right now? Yeah. Um, so... With Bangalore, I think we went into a complete lockdown situation about four months ago. And uh, we had that go on for almost a month and a half. And then they slowly started uh, opening things up. And currently we're at a state where everything is open. You have malls open, you have, I think uh, besides the trains, all kinds of public transport are open as well. So it's completely functional right now. Um, but the number of cases have dramatically increased, especially in the last uh, month. Um, and uh, that, that's where we are right now. And like you mentioned, uh, it's, it's a tech hub. So I think more than half the population here are people who are working for IT companies. So thankfully, for a lot of us, we were able to still adapt to the work from home culture. But uh, I, I know a lot of restaurants and a lot of, um, you know, considering that it's an IT hub, you also have... Uh, an equal number of restaurants and pubs and whatnot and all of those they definitely take a hit but I think we relatively still manage to power through because uh, we have I think we have a great system of delivery um, even before the entire pandemic I think we really we were so used to using um, you know, food delivery, delivery apps that it didn't really make much of a difference after but I think for the initial month or so, it was quite a challenge for people to just get groceries and just be able to you know, go out of the house. And um, again, when you consider the fact that it's an IT hub, it means that you have a lot of companies and a lot of buildings and a lot of infrastructure, which means that a very big chunk of the population are people who were uh, daily wage workers who probably work in infrastructure and construction. And it definitely affected them in terms of it negatively affected them 
uh, once the pandemic and lockdown situation hit because they were not able to go back to their place uh, wherever they're from and they definitely could not afford to live here. So there was a lot of challenges at that point. There were a lot of organizations which were delivering food for free, you know, to people who were needy, people who were old, people who didn't live with anyone. And we had a lot of people also working on trying to help uh, these migrant workers get back to where they're from. So I think Bangalore relatively handled it, I think, pretty much this as well as you possibly can say. But the cases have dramatically increased over the last month. But like you mentioned, Mumbai had its own challenges. I have a lot of friends there and um, from what I know, it's pretty much, uh, the capacity has been reached a very long time back and it's, it's getting really hard there. We have a lot of, they have a lot more cases than Bangalore does and they do not have the infrastructure to actually handle it. They don't have enough beds, they don't have enough hospitals. And yeah, it's a much more worse situation there. But I think relatively Bangalore has managed to um, get through the worst of it. Well, my heart really goes out to India because, you know, there's so many unique challenges with crowding and poverty and, yeah. you know, and Mumbai has the different encampments that are very dense and it would be impossible to socially yeah. isolate. And Mumbai has one of the biggest slums in the world. So, yeah, I, I definitely similar to China. Yeah, it's where Slumdog Millionaire was filmed. I mean, yes. it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's a very scary time. And um, are you still working at home? Yeah. Do you, yes. How long do you think you'll be working from home? Oh, for, for quite some time. We were actually told last month that, you know, this, they told us to just set up everything that we wanted. You know, get a desk, get a, get a monitor, whatever you need. You need to just make sure you have an entire setup at home because you're going to be from home for quite some time um, and actually uh, I think out of the 20 people at work more than 15 to 14 to 15 of them were not from Bangalore they were from, um, we had a lot of people from Kashmir we had uh, people from Gujarat a lot of places uh, in northern India were involved so most of them went back to their hometowns and very few of us are actually still here so yeah I think we're going to be continuing and it's worked out pretty well for us you know, working on situation we're still able to make that same sense of productivity and get things done. So we're going to be continuing with this for at least another few Except for the gelato. Oh man, yeah. I really wish that they could deliver till here. But I live very far away from where they are as well, so there's no chance of that. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been great talking to you. Before we go, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? And you can find me on Twitter at um, it's Swahili, which is S W W A H I L Y. And yeah, I'm also part of a lot of Facebook groups, so you can definitely hit me up and just say hi there. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. I do see you like Yeah, I had a lot of Facebook, fun. So that's great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of fun. I honestly did not know what I'm going to talk about. So, yes, it's been great. Thank you so much for being so comfortable with this. I really like thank you. Thank you for listening. Interested in being on the show? Sign up on our website, womeninwp.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and join our Facebook group to have conversations with other women in WordPress. <laughs>